Good morning. This is Teresa with Teresa's Treasures Ministry, and I'm coming to you this morning from uh, San Marcos, Texas. Uh, we moved here to be close to our daughter Jennifer and her kids, and then Jamie came after she's uh, gotten out of the Navy, and we are here, and we are enjoying our family. So this morning, I want to talk to you about uh, Let Not Your Heart Be Troubled. We've got a lot of things going on in the United States of America, and to that, to God be the glory, to God be the glory that he woke our nation up, and not only our nation, but I don't know if you've noticed, there's lots of other nations also that are fighting for the United States, wanting us to succeed. Uh, things turn around when God is doing a work. Uh, there's a lot of people, and I and I say this with the utmost respect for lots of nations and everything. But the United States of America has got God has got His hands on us, but we have got to get our hands back on the United States of America because it seems that we are uh, have let it go. You know, just like when you're blessed, and sometimes you take advantage of that. Well, God blesses me, so you know. Here I am. Well, no, God blesses you, and you still have to be diligent in evangelizing, reading His Word, praying, repenting, seeking Him, because, yes, even though you're blessed, you still need to repent. So I think it's kind of something that we know that we got away from repenting and just walking around thinking that we're blessed. Well, now that the tables have turned and our nation's in a real big trouble, we're wondering, well, how did God do this? Well, God didn't do this. Man did this. We did this. We weren't paying attention. And God woke us up. And I'm going to uh, come to you today and let not your heart be troubled. And this is in John uh, 14. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and the way you know. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's not going to be any other way that we can come to Jesus except through the Lord. Because why? Because God's a spirit. And what did Jesus do? Jesus was manifest in the flesh. He is the word of God. He's that spirit. Walking around flesh. When he walked around, when his, in his 33 years, when he walked around, he was God in the flesh. Okay, and you know, and it's so exciting because here we go. If you had known me, you would have known my father also. And from now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip saith to him, Lord, show us the father and it is sufficient for us. Jesus said to him, have I been so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Have I been with you so long? And yet you have not known me, Philip. Isn't that how we are sometimes? We get all anxious and we get frustrated and we get fearful and fear has torment. You know, perfect love casts out fear because fear has torment. Uh, and we do all these things and God is saying, hey, wait a minute. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and yet you have not known me, Philip? Remember what I said at the at, at the beginning, 14 and 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Let not your heart be troubled. What happens to a troubled heart? Heart attacks, strokes, frustration, panic attacks, anxiety, gut problems because your stomach gets all upset. You get constipated. You get diarrhea. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen when you get all stressed out. Who He who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Do you believe God? Do you believe Him that He's going to help us? With whichever way this election goes, 
Either way, God's going to help us. Do you not believe that I am the Father and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the sake of the works themselves. If you don't believe me for just who I am, who I say I am, I'm the way, the truth, and the life, if you don't even believe that, then just believe what the works that I do. Jesus was doing works so that they could know that he was Jesus, okay? Mostly surely I say to ye, you, he who believes in me, the works that I do, the will do also, and he will do also. And greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. Look, folks, God is with us. God will help us, but he will not tolerate unbelief. He won't do it. He will not tolerate fear because fear has torment. If you're living in fear, you're not living in faith. Well, I hope. Well, pray. Lay it down at Jesus' feet. One way or the other, there's going to be a great taking away. God is going to come and get his people. And they say, well, they've said that for years. They have, and that's what the Bible says. They say that they've been saying that for years. And they have. Are we excited about that? Yes. Are we excited about Jesus taking his church away? Yes. Are we excited about going to heaven? Yes. Today, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Are we the, are we the bride or not? Are we, do we trust God or not? Well, let me tell you a little thing that happened in Isaiah. So here, they're in Isaiah, and it's Isaiah 63. And he said, uh, let's see, Isaiah 63 and 10. And he talks about, I will mention, this is remembrance of the Lord's mercy. I will mention the loving kindness as of the Lord, of the Lord, and the praises of the Lord according to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us, and great goodness toward the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies, and according to the multitude of his loving kindnesses. For he said, Surely they are my people, children that will not lie, so he was their Savior. In all their affliction he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. And the angel of his presence saved them. How much more when there's grace in this dispensation than in that time? Just a different way. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them and he bare them and carried them all the days of old. But, and now here's where the, the, the fear, frustration, and belief, remember, that generation that he wanted to give the uh, people after bringing them out of Egypt with land of milk and honey, they didn't get because of unbelief. They frustrated him because they didn't believe. They had anxiety. Oh, are we willing to go back for the onions and the garlic? What? Are you kidding me? Do not. Do not go back into the world and act like that you are not. We are not. When you put your hand to the plow of Jesus we are not of those who turn back. We're going to keep on going. But they rebelled. This is 63 and 10. But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Can you vex God's Spirit? Yes, you can. You know how? Worry, frustration, unbelief, fear, torment, anxiety, panic attacks. Why? Because you don't believe God when he says, let not your heart be troubled. What does, what does a troubled heart do? What happens? Anxiety, panic attacks, heart attacks, strokes. I mean, I knew a woman who was so bitter that she was so raging at her ex-husband that she had strokes because her blood pressure went, I mean, oh my goodness, I couldn't believe it. She had strokes because of her unforgiveness. I mean, she was doused in it. And I couldn't believe it. It was like chains, chaining her down to her hatred and her bitterness. It's costly. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy, and he fought against them. Do you want God fighting against you because you are vexing his Holy Spirit? 
Are you wanting God to, to take his spirit away from you? Because he will. In Ephesians 4 and 30, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Grieve not the Holy Spirit of God. One time, my husband wasn't in church. I was in church five years before my husband was in church. And he, he so he starts going to my church and he said, oh, we're not going to do that. We're going to go to another church. I was so upset because here I am. I am, this is my church. I've been in this church for a long time, five years. And I loved my church. I loved my church people. I loved all my people that was there. All my brothers and sisters, we'd been praying all this time for my husband to be saved. And now he's telling me that he's going to take me to another church. And I was grieved. And I remember uh, staying awake in an all-night prayer meeting. And I was on the couch in the living room. And my husband was uh, working nights. He worked nights for eight years at Texas Instruments. And I remember, actually, he worked longer than that for at night. But anyway, uh, I was grieving the Holy Ghost. And I was bawling my head off. I was crying because of all the frustration and, and it wasn't turning out like I thought it was. And, and here he's going to take me away from the people that I love, the people that prayed for him, the people that, and the Holy Ghost quickened me. I mean, he got onto me and he said, do not grieve my spirit. And I wiped away my tears. I got up off that couch. I said, whoa. Ephesians 4 and 30, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. You heard it in in Isaiah 63 and 10, but they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit. Therefore, he was turned to be their enemy and he fought against them. Don't get in the place of unforgiveness, bitterness, gall, hatred, anxiety, frustration. Determine in your heart that you're going to accept what God's got for you. You're going to pray until it changes and you're going to believe him. I believe him. He's the only one that can change things. He's the only one that can move mountains. He's And I've watched him do that. Have you ever, this is the coolest thing one time, uh, Steve and I were watching this commentary on the ocean and mountains and it was just the coolest thing because I had heard all this time that, you know, that, that cast the mountains into the sea and, you know, just speak to the mountains and God will take them away. And I mean, you know, all these things. And so I, but I had never seen that. And I was like, wow, you know, and sometimes it's literally, and sometimes it is figuratively, you know, you just say it, okay, get this mountain of debt out of my way and you know God shows you ways to that you either pay it or somebody gives you money and you can pay it off or you know I mean that's just like a mountain one of the mountains these were literal mountains (laughs) we were watching this documentary on the ocean and mountains and these mountains would just go into the sea nothing gone I said, wow, it changed my life on thinking of the ways that God removes the mountains. It was beautiful. So when you, when you see a mountain in your way, a roadblock, pray and let God take it away. But don't worry until it happens. Because remember Abraham, he staggered not at the promises of God through unbelief. God wants to bless you and me. He wants to bless us, but he can't do it. If we're hanging on to unforgiveness, anxiety, stress, and and living in unbelief that God can't get around every obstacle. You know, you and I are the ones that set up the obstacles. God just says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. You pray and use faith as the vehicle. Okay, God, I don't see it, but I believe you're going to give it to me. Or I believe this is going to be done. Because God, usually man has messed it up. And God is going to come in and take care of it. And sometimes you got consequences that God will not take care of. You'll have to walk through those consequences. Great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. Psalms 119, 165. 
in the Good News translation of uh, the Bible, Ephesians 4 and 30, it says, And do not make God's Holy Spirit sad, for the Spirit is God's mark of ownership on you, a guarantee that the day will come when God will set you free. When's that going to be? In the great taking away of the church, the bride. Have a great day. Let's pray. And uh, I hope you have a happy new year. I don't know if I will make another video before then, but, but let's pray. And I'm going to pray that God has delivered me from anxiety, from fear, from stress, from unforgiveness. And he's gave me peace in my mind. Peace be still. You remember when he was in the ocean and, uh, or on, actually on the, uh, in the boat and the uh, waves were high, the Sea of Galilee, and the waves were high, and everything was shaken, and, but he wasn't shaken. That's the cool thing about God. He wasn't shaken. Remember, let not your heart be troubled. Let's pray. Lord God, you see everyone out there. God, I'm asking you to help every person, every man, woman, and child that hears this video. I'm asking you, Lord God, to help their mind. I bind peace. I'm, I bind uh, fear and give peace, Lord, in the Holy Ghost. Loose it in the Holy Ghost, God, the peace. I bind the spirit of fear because fear has torment, God. You don't want any of us to be tormented. God, I bind unforgiveness because that unforgiveness torments people. It keeps bringing the same thing over and over again and taking them and making them crazy in their mind, Lord God. It is under, in, um, it's under, bleh, under interrupted thoughts. <laughs> Sorry about that. Interrupted thoughts. When you don't forgive somebody, if you see them or think their name or something, you, your peace is interrupted. Well, don't let your peace be interrupted. Don't let it be interrupted. Believe in God. Let not your heart be troubled. Okay? Sometimes people have health issues that it just interrupts their mind. When is God going to heal me? He will heal you. I'm a person who said five specialists told would never walk again. And I'm walking, talking, living. No pain medicine, didn't take pain medicine when I was hurting because I just knew I was not going to let a bunch of pain medicine, a bunch of uh, people that didn't know me, tell me how my life was going to be. Forget it. No, I don't. No, no. I'm a nurse. I wasn't a nurse then. Then God made me a nurse because I didn't let them tell me, yes, you're going to be crippled for the rest of your life. No, no, I've got a God. My grandma's got a God that can heal. I won't be healed. And I was. So don't let any diagnosis keep you down or shut you up praying to God. God, I'm going to be healed. Now faith is a substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen. Now faith. Now faith. Now faith. Don't give up. Don't lose your faith because what's Jesus going to looking for when he comes back here? He's looking for your faith. Let's pray. Lord God, we love you and we praise you and glorify you, God. There's nothing that you can't do. Thank you for healing every mind, every soul, every body that hears this video, God, because you're the Holy One of Israel. We love you and we thank you. God, you see our nation is in turmoil. God, we're asking you, Lord, to make the crooked places straight in the United States of America. We love you, Lord, and we thank you, Lord God. Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to take back the United States and give it back to the people so that, Lord God, that we can do what we know to do and be what we need to be, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. United we stand, divided we fall, Lord, and we know that. Lord, help us. Help us in this end time, God, because we are living in the end time hour. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'm telling you that God wants to heal your mind, your heart, and your soul. Just ask him. Repent. Repent. I love you. I love all of y'all. In Jesus' name, have a great, great day. In Jesus' name, amen.